In this video we are going to create this awesome mechanic called picking doors, which is usually found in horror games. This mechanic is going to enhance the action in your horror game, so without further ado, let's jump straight into the blueprint. Hi guys, Nitro here. So as you saw, we are going to create that cool mechanic, picking this door. So let's jump straight into the blueprint. So this is pretty much the door. Nothing too special here, but we have a physics constraint, which is going to let us pick the door only in one direction with 45 degrees angle right here. Okay, so let's go a little bit into the event graph. So the first thing that we actually have here is our static mesh, get world rotation, and we are going to uh, we are going to promote that to a variable, and I called it original door rotation. So I don't know if this is really useful, but it might be for different situations. And now let's go a little bit into the viewport. So as I said, we have here two static meshes. The first one looks like this, so no simulate physics. Then into the static mesh here, we have our simulate physics to be true. The mass in kilograms are, is going to be 200. The linear damping is going to be zero. The angular damping is going to be three. The gravity is going to be enabled. And we are going to lock almost all positions and rotations besides Z. We don't want to lock that because we want to rotate this on the Z axis, as you can see right here. And then let's go a little bit into the physics constraint. So as I said, this is going to make sure that our door cannot rotate more than 45 degrees. And I know this. I know that this is not 45 and this is 90, but here, if you're going to see, the swing one limit is 45. So what we need to do here first is that for the first component name, we want to it to be the door frame. For the component name two, we want to be static mesh, the second static mesh. Then we want to disable the collision between them. We want to enable the projection. Actually, this is enabled by default anyway. And I set here to be 45. And then what we need to do is to make sure that we have all of this locked, uh, but swing one motion should be limited. And here you'll need to put 45 degrees. Uh, this is actually based on the door frame that I have right here, as you can see. So if you have a custom one, make sure that it fits. And then here I set the angular rotation offset to be minus 45. So it is going to fit perfectly in there. All right, now let's go a little bit into our character. So here is where all the good stuff is happening. So first what I have here is an input action mapping. So let's create one real fast. Go to edit, project settings, and then let it load. Then go to input right here. Make sure you're on action mappings. Click on this plus, and then make sure you give it a name and a button. Mine, as you can see here, is use, and it is binded to my E button. All right back into our character. Here I am going to have a custom event. So just create one for now and we are going to set it later. Then what we need to do is to call our uh, our custom event, which is called for me focus door. But remember, you can rename everything that's in here. Okay, now let's go into the event itself. So what I have here is a boolean. So we are going to check if we are focused or not. This is going to check some other things, so if I'm going to drag this in here, you're going to see what I mean. If we are going to be focused, we don't want to be able to move. So, into the movement part that is coming default with the first person and the third person template, I think, they should be there. Here you're going to see the input action axis move forward, put a branch right here, and then check if focused on the door is true or not. If it's false, then you want to add movement input. If it's false here as well, you want to add movement input once again. Then what we want to do is to check here again, as I said, if we are focused on or not. If we are focused, we want to set it to be false. If we are not focused, we uh, if we are not focused, we want to do a line trace. So it's just a basic one, which I have in a function, so I can use it multiple times. So, line trace by channel, get the camera, get the world location, 
plug that into the star, so it's going to set the start of the line trace, get a four vector, multiply with that with a float, add the two vectors, and then plug it into the end. This way, we are going to set the end of our line trace. And then, what we want to do is to check if we hit something or not, that is going to be represented by a red dot, which we don't have if we don't hit anything. So as you can see, the red dot at the end. Then, if we hit something, we want to get our hit. So we are going to break this right here. And if the hit actor, and we need to cast then to our door. So the name of the door for me, it's door, obviously. And so, if the cast succeeded, which if the hit actor would not be the door, it, it would fail. We want to check if our hit component is the door itself. So not a frame door, but a door. So if the static mesh is equal to the hit component, then we are going to set the current door to be an actor reference. And then we want to set focused on door to be true. So this way we can just set if we hit the door or not then we'll have to do something else in here. Again, here I have a custom event that is going, to, is going to let me rotate the door. So what I have here is an input and it is called ZYO and it is a float. I'm going to multiply this with a minus one and then I'm going to make that a rotator and only plug in the Z value. Then we want to get a current door which is the reference to the actor which we just created right here. We are going to get a static mesh, we are going to get a world rotation, and we are going to combine the rotators. Then we are going to set the world rotation of the static mesh. And then what we need to do is to go to the input axis and then just check if we are focused on the or not. If it's false, then just run the normal blueprint. If it's true, we want to do a sequence. At the same time, we want to run this part right here. So add controller your input. And then from the then zero, we are going to get the axis value and multiply that with seven. The reason why we are multiplying this with seven is because if this would be one, which would mean normal, this would be too slow. As you can see, you need to turn a lot for it to move. And so we are going to multiply this with seven. And then plug that into the input right here. So just call your event that you just created and plug that into the Z yo. And then here, what you can do, if you don't want to be able to move your head up and down, you can have here a branch. For me now, this is useless because both the values, so even if it's true or if it's false, it is going to run the same script. So this is useless for me. But if you'd like only to be, to be able to move your head to the left and to the right, then you could uncheck this, so unpin that. And, and now I'm, going, I'm not going to be able to move my head up and down as you can see. So guys, I hope that this tutorial was interesting and that you liked it. And if you learned something new or enjoyed it, don't forget to subscribe to my channel to help me and also leave a like and a comment if you have any questions. So guys, let me know in the comments below what else would you like to see. So until next time, goodbye.